Hello and welcome back to the Football Terrace. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button and please make sure you turn on the bell notifications as well. That will let you know every single time we go live. Turn your notifications on on your smartphone as well. Why would you not, especially during the transfer window? So much breaking news all the time. Chelsea leading the race at the moment, but who knows what's going to happen with Messi. We've got some Sancho news for you as well now. And I'm... I'm trying to not get myself excited about this. I spent yesterday trying to verify this infection. Some people have verified it to be a to be true. Others have said they've heard absolutely nothing about it whatsoever. But I wanted to present this to you because I, I feel it's very interesting from from a a standpoint of of the poker game to which the likes of Fabrizio Romano have spoken about on many, many, many occasions. You all know my, my fervent belief is that the Jaden Sancho deal is not dead. I've, I've said that as, as a personal view. Forget what media outlets have said. My personal view is that the deal um, still has a huge possibility of being completed. Um, I was sent a message, and this came to me two days ago, um, that said, uh, I'll, I'll go through it with you. And we are also going to get onto Man United's transfer kind of reply um that they sent out uh, to fill um a, a few weeks a few a day or so ago i want to go through that in a moment and to give you my interpretation of what that means so let's just read through this message that i was sent it said uh, terry how you doing blah, blah 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 as we know man united's proposal of 70 plus 30 plus 20 was rejected now on the 70 plus 30 plus 20 some people are claiming man united have never made an official bid this is where semantics come into play. Man United making an inquiry via an intermediary into Dortmund and saying, would 70, 30, 20 be okay? Some people will call that a bid. Some people will say that's an inquiry. Some will say, oh, no, I definitely didn't make an official bid. It's semantics. Man United are making serious waves to try and get this deal done. Whether you want to call it an official bid or not, it was a suggestion put forward. So it was there. It was rejected, though. It says Man United have now changed their stance and are willing to pay 85 million pounds up front and 25 million pounds as guaranteed installments. He says the brief was given out to a number of newspapers, including the Telegraph, but not yet published. Um, but there is discussions before, uh, and but there have been discussions before going public. Um, it's likely to be in and around the weekend that we expect to see more noise surrounding this. Um, sorry. He says, by the weekend, we expect to see more noise around this. Um, and you will start to see more talk around the Jade and Sancho deal start to arise. I responded by saying, like, where have you got this information from? He, he told me as, as an example. He says, expect a, a, a press brief saying the deal might um, not be off kind of narrative, like sort of something, something kind of brief. And what was interesting about that was only a day later that we were sent through or we saw the likes of Duncan Castles talking about Man United are, are not uh, proactively kind of exploring avenues for alternatives to Sancho. They still think they can get him and go back for him. So maybe I'm doing, you know, when people read a star sign, if you read your star signs like a week later, you can often connect the dots back. The, the things are, are, are put out in a kind of an ambig, a vague and unambiguous way. They're always down to interpretation, meaning that you can twist it to fit your narrative. So you think that, that reading star signs is really, really true. There's the element I might be doing here. Personally, I might be, I might go go back. Okay, well, someone said we were going to see these briefs start middle of the week. We started seeing these briefs in the middle of the week, uh, and maybe I'm reading too much into it. Um, it says here, there's a lot of, it says what we have been briefed is there's a lot of posturing, um, and it's to show that Woodward is, is in control, um, and that's all. Um, I went back with saying sort of, who's your friend? Where's your connection? He then explains that to me. Now, I'm not going to go into the, 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 the granular detail of that because it's a private message. You don't share people's DMs as an example. We then went into more of a conversation around Woodward around what do you mean he's trying to gain control? Fans don't want him to look like he's in control. They just want the deal to be done. And the general consensus is that Woodward is trying to firm up his, he, the sort of view that people have of him within the footballing world that he won't be dictated to. He won't be dragged over the coals. He doesn't like the idea that he's been disrespected by Borussia Dortmund, not sitting down face to face with him. That's why he's, he's taken what a couple a week, a two and a half weeks to get to this point where they're ready to put this new inquiry in because they don't want to appear to be weak. 
I totally get how frustrating that is for fans, but I do understand from a business and commercial point of view why you would do that, why you would wait, why you don't want to go out and make yourselves look desperate. I suppose the, the, the element of it is, is this. We have to wait for the next three, four, five days to see whether any of this comes to fruition. As I said yesterday, I reached out to James Ducker at The Telegraph to ask his opinion. He hasn't come back to me at all. Uh, there were two other journalists I spoke to, one of them being Jan um, Friotov. He said he's not heard anything about this at all, but he's interesting to see how it plays out. Another two journalists that will remain nameless, uh, one who works for The Guardian uh, and the other who works for the Daily, uh, sorry, the Daily Mirror, have said that they have heard fairly similar rumours in the last three or three or four days. Um, they didn't, of course, give me any kind of inclination as to who that information came from. So there certainly seems to be a little bit of noise about this, which I think is very, very interesting indeed. Um, somebody here says... Did you get this information from the Premier League in the no account? Well, what's interesting is I looked at that guy's account because people, of course, yesterday, the Jurity Devil connected us to them. We've sorted that matter out now. They, I was sent a message about this deal about 12, 13 hours before they tweeted about it. So whether or not, I, I, I can't connect the two. I mean, it's similar amounts of money. The news is fairly similar, but who knows? Um, but as I say, the message I was sent, I can give you a timestamp on this. This was sent to me at 12.30 a.m. in the morning on the 23rd. Sorry, 24th. So if that tweet was posted after, go check. I don't know what time that tweet was. So I was sent this information at half past 12 in the morning um, on Monday. So it was over, sort of over 48 hours ago now, um, getting towards sort of, 50 plus hours ago now, is, is it gone? 50, 60 hours ago, I was sent it. So if that tweet came before this, then maybe this person's taken it and finessed it. But I was sent the information prior to that. And it isn't something I just run straight out of and made a video when I, I wanted to do my best to go out there and research and talk to these journalists that were supposedly involved to gauge other people's opinions. But I certainly think it's interesting that everything's gone very, very quiet on the Manchester United um, front. So from my point of view, it's, it's, an, it's, as I say, it's a very, very interesting, a few people here saying Terry Duncan Castle said the United deal was off. What did I read yesterday though? I swear I read something about him yesterday on the Jaden Sancho front. I, I must've liked the tweet. I'll go back to, it. I like so many tweets and read so many things a day. I often um, lose a sort of train of thought on this. Let me just see if I can find it again. Maybe I didn't like, maybe I didn't like it and I've lost it as an example. That does sometimes happen as well. Like these things can kind of fly past me because I don't save them as an example. But I swear I read yesterday in a podcast that United have uh, stopped. I swear I read that. I'm going to go now look at the United report. It might be something they tweeted out as an example. Um, bear with me while I go back and find this. We are live, but uh, it's important for me to make sure that I haven't just made this up, that I did read it. And it might have been on the United report. It might have been somewhere else. Yeah, this is Duncan Castles of the podcast yesterday. Absolutely. It says Man United have held off on talks uh, with some of the alternatives for Jaden Sancho. The club are prioritizing putting their efforts into a deal for Sancho. That was Duncan Castles 18 hours ago. So as I just said, I knew I read that somewhere. Uh, I just couldn't quite remember when. And that was my point. So this deal was dead as far as the journalists were concerned. I've been sent this information early hours of Monday morning and... We're just starting to see the, 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 the early embers of this story start to pick up pace. I don't know whether it's true or not. I'm not making that claim here. I'm not making to have any inside information. I've simply been passed this um, by somebody that works on the business in the business segment segment of a major newspaper. And he has told me that he has been briefed on this. He reached out to me because he's someone uh, that thought I'd like the information, which is very, very nice. So it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how this progresses over the next few days. Do me a big, big favor and smash that like button for me, please, ladies and gentlemen. Really, really important to the platform that you get that done. The next thing I want to speak about, though, is the, the statement that's come out from Manchester United. Because when I first read it, I, I didn't really... What's the, word I'm, what's the word I want to use here? I didn't, I didn't really react if that makes sense. It wasn't something that made me panic or, or, or worry. Phil Brown um, tweeted this out from his network, uh, BT, uh, sorry, BTP uh, Media Network, big them up. Essentially what happened is they wrote an article in a publication and Man United have responded to it. And, and this is what Man United have said in relation to their recruitment since the start of the corona crisis. There's three points. 
Man United have said in a response in an email uh, to Phil, the club the club points out that it remains committed to supporting the manager in strengthening the squad over the long term. The club also points out that this summer's transfer window will not be business as usual because of the huge economic impact um, from the pandemic, both in terms of immediate uh, loss of revenue and the uncertainty over the long term impact of the crisis. And thirdly, Man United's point of view is that these harsh economic realities mean the club must be cautious this summer to ensure that the club preserve, um, preserves its strength through through this difficult period. And a lot of people seem triggered by this. A lot of people seem angry. A lot of oh, the Glazers are screwing us over. I, I can't help but read this and quite simply think to myself, I can't, I can't, all I can think of is who is expecting anything other than a reply along those lines. These are vague, ambiguous, open-ended statements. This is man, and this is brilliant for Man United because it puts that message out there into the market that we're not going to overpay for players, which is what we have been demanding of Manchester United for years. Stop overpaying, stop spending money that's not necessary. We did it with Maguire. Everyone's angry about it. United have set their stall out very much so. We're prepared to support the manager and strengthen the squad. What we're not prepared to do is pay £80 million for a, for a Jack Grealish who's worth 40 What we're not prepared to do is pay £108 million up, up front cash for Jadon Sancho and, and pay for one of the world's biggest ever transfers in terms of a, it, it, with a payment structure that 99.9% .9 of transfers don't follow. I think Man United are right for doing this from a business standpoint and, a, 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 and whatnot. The difference is, do they have the ability and the relationships with other football clubs and the intermediaries that are involved to articulate this in a way, in a, in a way that I call it a sent, a, a assertive charm, where you lay down your foundations and your mantra and your thoughts, but without pissing people off? That's the big difference. Do they have the emotional intelligence to equal the intellectual intelligence that they have. And I sometimes think that's where Man United have gone wrong. There's, of course, great IQ in these decision makers and in these bankers and these commercial minds. You know that because they've got to this level of expertise. They, they, they've worked at such high levels in the banking and, and, and corporate industries. They have to be intelligent. It's impossible to do that and lack intelligence. What a lot of people, though, at this level do ha have, a, have, a, have a distinct void of is emotional intelligence. Can they read a room? Can they build relationships? Can they make people like them and want to work with them? That's the big question here. So in terms of Man United's statement, what were we expecting? Them to say, listen, we're rich. We're going to get through this pandemic fine. It will be business as usual. That then literally means everybody goes out and increases their prices further. Or they want the money up front, as an example. When Woodward said seven years ago, we can do things in the transfer market nobody else can, it was the biggest mistake of his professional career because it, it added additional money to everything we'd ever done before and it lowered the valuation of every single football player at the club. People were not prepared to pay um, for our players and they weren't prepared to give us anybody for anywhere near market value. We were pretty much paid between 10 and 50% over market value for every single player that we have purchased for the past seven years. It's why in Fergie's lifetime in the Premier League, he spent around 570 million. Of course, you take inflation into account, but that's a sort of 20 odd year, he made that career. That's like a 25 year period. But since then in seven years, we've spent nearly a billion, almost double that, than what Fergie spent. Now, if you put in inflation, you argue that Fergie was probably nearer the 2 billion mark within, it, within inflation. But at the, at the same time, Man United have hemorrhaged, I would say overspent around 400 million pounds. There's no doubt. That has to stop. And the reason that has to stop is there isn't an endless supply of money, even especially with the Glazers taking out uh, funds like they do. So you want the business to be done correctly. So when I see these types of stories, I understand the frustration and the annoyance. But equally, that is one of the most corporate, open-ended, ambiguous statements I've ever seen in my life. And I re it, it is not worth the paper. That, no one writes on paper anymore, but it isn't worth... It's not worth your time even reading. There's nothing in that to be read. Just, of course, they're going to say that. It's pretty much what Jurgen Klopp said live about not buy buying Timo Werner. I can't warrant spending 40 odd million pounds on a player during this time, during these times and these problems. 
when clubs are put on the spot to ask about what they are and are not going to spend, they're all going to come out with questions like this. When, when Arsenal made their redundancies, did they not say something similar? Now, they, they've, they've specifically addressed the transfer window because that's what they're being called out on. But these answers, answers are going to be like that across the board. And then when we sign somebody, if they were re-questioned on that, they would say, oh, we've managed to, you know, secure a credit line. We've rejigged X, Y, and Z. We've borrowed from here. We've got further investment. They'll spin it in another way. The money is there. They just want to be frugal with it. And I don't blame them for doing that. Let's do a few more comments here. This Sancho news is tiring. We need him. Well, it is, but you, you need to try and not allow yourself consistently to get emotionally involved in it. This story's out there. Let's see what comes of it. Let's see where we're... And what's going to be interesting in the next two or three days, and the reason I wanted to speak about it now is because if we get to like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and there's nothing around this deal that, that, that or this information that I was provided with that sounds true, then, then it isn't true. But I, I thought I'd put it out there just to see what comes to see if we can look back and put our ducks in and go, oh, do you know what? There, there, was a, there was an element of truth in this. The one thing that stands out to me, and I was angry about it a few days ago, and I've calmed down a little bit now, is why is it so quiet? I understand that we may not want to spend £250 million cash this summer, but no one? We're going to be, we, we can't, we're the only Premier League club, I think, maybe Wolves who haven't bought anybody yet. It, COVID-19 cannot have hit us as bad as everybody else. It's impossible. So everyone, oh, we're not going to spend a penny. I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that now. I, I've had a bit of time to reflect and think about it, and, and it's something that I've changed my mind on. But there we go. I'm going to do some of your live comments on here. Um, what are the expectations of Oli if he spends $100 million this summer? Daniel, it depends on who they sign for $100 million. Uh, Leslie here says Lampard is buying everything that moves and has legs. Hired all these best players now. Um, save your own club. Okay, cool. I don't quite get the message you're putting out there. Um, okay. United bid. Oh, for uh, better. Sheila has been rejected and it was reported through the media. Just now, if Dortmund rejected United's bid, it will be reported. Stop lying. What are you talking about? See, this is this is Calvin. This is where like people like you get really confused. I think what people like Calvin do is they 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 don't care who the outlet is. They just seek the news that's negative or positive to push their agenda and their argument. I've seen some outlets say United have made bids for Sancho. I've seen other outlets say there's been no bids. Thus, I sit in this area where I think there's 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 an in between that's true. It may not be an official bid, but there's certainly been inquiries. Like I said before, if you if I got to a girl right, uh, and I'm like, listen, I like your friend, she's cute, I like her. Would she be interested in going out with me? If her friend comes back and says, oh, I don't think she would be Terry. That's not she doesn't she ain't up for it. I've not officially been rejected because I didn't actually ask her out, but I've still asked her out. So let's not get stuck in the weeds on these things, Calvin. Like I said before. You know, I've, I've read multiple reports. There's some reports have said that we haven't even spoke to Dortmund yet. And then some say we spoke to an intermediary. Like I say, it, it flips and changes, which is why you need to read all of it and then come to your own conclusions. Um, and you know where it says we've had a bid for um, Bada Sheila turned down? You'll probably find that another outlet will come out in a few hours and go, no, United never put a bid in for him. But what you will do is you'll, you will just seek out the news that, suit, that, that, fit, that, 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 that fits your agenda. That answers the question, confirmation bias, essentially, Calvin, which is a shame, really, because I've seen other comments from you in here before, and you generally seem like a really intelligent person. And intelligent people don't seek confirmation bias, they seek the truth. Terry, what about the better Sheila bid? Oh, listen, I didn't even hear about that. That's something that must have uh, uh, slipped past me today. I'm going to go and have a little look at that now while I'm live on the air with you all. Okay, I've seen the thing come out. It says Monaco rejected a 25 million offer from Man United for defender. Uh, Benoit Bedeshila, a source close to Monaco, says that unless they make a Martial-like offer, unrefutable offer, he will stay. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens there. I think from my point of view, and if that means, again, but this is where the argument comes in. If we have if we have bid for him and it has been rejected at 25 million, does anybody want, does anyone think this kid's worth 60 million pound? Is he? Again, nobody was talking about Badashila on this platform, on social media 
four months ago. So is it worth 60 million pounds? And if we have bid money, then we do have money to spend. I just think that's why people need to calm down. Um, but equally, I've seen posts like this from people saying Man United have had bids turned down as well. So to say that, man, you know, I, I could probably search now and put in Sancho bid rejected and then just put Man United's name afterwards. Let me, go- let me Google search this. Uh, let's see. On the 27th of July, TalkSport had a headline that says Man United have £89 million pounds, uh, bid rejected. So that was TalkSport on that date. Uh, let's see some other dates here. 28th of July, Man United have their second bid rejected. That's Manchester Evening News. Um, hang on, that can't be right. Let's do a few more of these. Let's go to the next page here. There'll be other days. Okay, 3rd of June. In the Express, Borussia Dortmund reject Man United's offer as an example. So that's just that's, that's me skimming the internet for less than a few seconds. There are always going to be articles, bid rejected, bid, bid not rejected. Like I've said um, before, I just we go through the, what the stories are saying and then we discuss their validity. To say that there wouldn't there would be reports that man go back to Kelvin's point. Kerry, if Man United bid for Chen Chow and it was rejected, it'd be reported on. There's multiple media outlets here that I can see ranging from the Express. There's one here in the Guardian. Loads here. Loads here talking that United have had a bid rejected up to a month ago. Here, 4th of June, Man United's mammoth 140 million pound rejection over Jaden Sancho. Lots on the 27th here. One from four days ago. Um, that San United have had it rejected. Like I've said before, there's loads. There's been, there's been countless reports that Man United have, have submitted bids in. I don't know. I don't know how the internet works where some of you live. I don't know how I can find this information very quickly, and many of you don't. Maybe it's because you don't seek it. Maybe you don't seek uh, this information. Uh, Aaron tweeted out here. He says, "Can't blame Monaco for rejecting our bid for Better Sheila. He's an important player for them. Uh, Novak uh, Kovic is trying to build a team capable of competing." Uh, for the league on title, Mario Gomez uh, to Monaco as well, I'm hearing. Yeah, I mean, if they think he's worth tw- 25 million, then more than 25 million, then go for it. But um, nobody on here was talking about the guy. Nobody here was talking about this guy a few months ago. So is he worth us bidding 60 million pound for? Um, I'm I'm really not too sure about that, if I'm being honest. There we go. Let's read a few more comments here. Terry, you, you were saying that Messi would make Man United Premier League champions. This is nonsense. Even with him, United are miles away from Liverpool. Listen, Winnerpool, your name is. No one has any idea. It's an opinion. It's a hypothesis. So is yours. Um, someone like Messi, is he capable of, of, of gaining Man United an extra 20 points? Of course he is. Of course he is. 110%. He's, a, he's able to do that. I don't even really, it's not even a debate in my opinion. Of course, he's got the capabilities of doing that. And we don't, like I said the other day to O'Shea, we don't necessarily need, Man, Man United and Chelsea don't necessarily need to gain an extra 30, 40 points this season to win the league title because you don't know how many Liverpool are going to accumulate. Right now, we're all on zero points each. So we don't know, you never quite know how far the gap is. Our Liverpool... Were Liverpool 40 points better than Man United in the last six months of last season? The, an- the answer is no. They weren't. I don't even know if they were better than Man United in, 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 in the last... We can go and look at that, right? Let's go and look at that, that, the form table here, right? EPL form table. Let me give you an example. I don't like that logic. It doesn't make sense to me, right? So because of the form table here, we'll look at, la- we'll look at last season. And let's go from match day... Uh... Oh, hang on. Why is it not showing anything? It's not allowing me to do it. That's a shame. Why, is the, why isn't the form table showing? Sorry, peeps. It's annoying me. Right. Match day. Let's go from match day, say, 20 until the end of the season. I want to do this. I'm live, so bear with me a second, right? Let's go from a little bit later. Let's go from match day 25. So the last third of the season, I'm trying to... Yeah. So from match day 25, there was 14 games played. Man United got three more points than Liverpool. So in the last 13 games, 
it was fairly even. We go back a little bit less, go for match day 23. So we got pushed out the 15 games. Liverpool were three points better than Man United. So for the second half of last season, well, just under the second half of last actually, let's go to 18 games. We'll go back for the full, um, for that full period. So for match game 20, like I said, how much better were Liverpool in the last 18 games of the season? United got 38 points. Liverpool got 44. So in the second half of last season, Man United were only six points worse than Liverpool. That, for me, shows the gap's been closed. To an extent. To an extent. What United need to do is maintain that form over a um, 38-game period. How do they do that? They improve their team. Are you telling me Lionel Messi couldn't close that gap further? So come on. We, we, we closed the gap on Liverpool in the second half of last season without Lionel Messi. And those are facts. That's why this whole you've got to get 40 more points this year are not necessarily true. You know, and no, li- listen, Liverpool want to overhype for anything, but they did. Man United closed the gap on them. You know, people don't want to look at that. Oh, we finished the, your start of the feet, your first 18 games of the season, you blew us away. If we go to the first 18 games of the season where Man United were absolutely poor in comparison, as an example, let's go to those first opening games. Man United, you had 55 points. Man United had 28. That's where the damage was done. But the second half, we caught you up. Now, United now need to start the season well. But you're telling me Lionel Messi? You're telling me in the first 19 games? Uh, uh, think about how we played last season, the, the, the first half of the campaign. You're telling me Messi wouldn't have won us at least five games with Messi's brilliance being the greatest player of all time in most people's eyes? Come on. By the way, this is all stupid because Messi ain't even coming to Man United. But anyway, I'm just saying it doesn't make sense at all. People's logic is so flawed in reality. Uh, Terry, I hope when we sign Sancho uh, that the vid will be so good. Every rival will be laughing at us. Listen, trust me, there will be a very funny video going out if Man United pull that deal off. But listen, everyone who's tuned in, thank you very much. As always, please smash the like button for us. Really important that we get that done. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God, God, blah, blah, blah. God bless and we'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.